Hello, hello, and what is up, ADHD gang? And today we are here with a sewing tutorial. It has taken me so long to be motivated to film something like this because it takes a lot of editing. <laughs> and college is a lot right now. Um, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make one of these. Uh, it is a long sleeve button up. Depending on what fabric you made out of, it could be just a normal button up. Um, it could also be short sleeve, um, a jacket. You could line it, do whatever you want with it. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into the video, I guess. So uh, to start off, you are going to need something to like draft a pattern, have a pattern. So um, I'm gonna link this down below. This lady shows you how to make the same exact thing that I'm making, except I have modified mine to be long sleeve and hers is short sleeve. Um, so her video shows exactly how to do it if you want it short sleeve. If you go into her video, into like her description, she has a pattern link. You just take the pattern, you print it out, you cut it out, tape it together, and stuff like that. So yeah, that is that whole part. So let's actually get into starting it. So hopefully y'all can hear me. This is gonna be like a super wide angle. I'm gonna try to like get maybe a few close-ups and some other things. Um, so the fabric that I'm gonna be using is this. Um, I don't know the name of the fabric because it was thrifted. Um, yeah, it's, I feel like almost like a crepe, maybe. Very, very drapey, not as stiff, super thin. It is in like this beigey tan kind of color. It's a little hard to see on camera um, because of the lighting. But yeah, so we're gonna start out with this. Um, I do also have a like tester piece of fabric. We're gonna see about maybe a lining. If that does not work for a lining, then this jacket will be like the other one I just showed and it won't have a lining. So you're going to need fabric. Um, the pattern suggests about three-ish yards. I would go with maybe three or a little bit over if you're doing the long sleeve. If you're doing the short sleeve, then it is not necessary. You will also need, I do not, I don't have it on me at the moment, but when it comes to it, you're going to need lining. Is that what it's called? Don't, we're not, I'm, I'm a little out of it today. Um, I know I have it like right here somewhere. Um, Oh, that, it's called fusing. Fusing is what we're also going to need. It's like a stiffener type-esque material. It's like a white, super thin to go in between just for like the collar, if you want a stiffer collar. If you don't and you like um, them kind of floppy, this is, I made this as like a t-shirt. This is like a very floppy collar. The gray one that I showed is another collar. Um, I also made this one. This one, I like did a patchwork fabric, made the fabric myself. And I have also made it before out of this. Um, if you do want to see the gray one, um, on, in the link in the description, in my link tree, I have... A video on my TikTok and on my Instagram, Marie Designs Fashion, of like a reel and a video of me like kind of speeding up through the process of the gray one. Um, it's not as in depth as we're getting in today, but if you kind of want a more shorter version, head over there. So I'm gonna take this fabric, fold it in half. 
I'm going to put the fold next to me on this side just because I feel that it's easier that way than having to reach over. You're also going to need a pair of scissors as well. These are just the ones that I have and weights. I have personally made my own weights. Um, I think I did show beforehand in an earlier video of mine. You just kind of need something heavy. I also have books laying around and other things. So, assuming that you have your pattern. If you do not have that pattern, you did not go over to her video, which I will try to link down below, and print off the pattern, you can very easily just take a jacket, take a shirt, take a flannel, and add like an extra, depending on what you want it to be, add a little inch, half an inch, seam allowance, or add a little bit extra if you want it a bit more baggier, and you can trace your own garment. That's completely up to you. So. If you have the pattern and you are going to be following along with me, we are going to take the one piece, the men's button down short sleeve front, front number one. So this, this shape here, we're going to take this one and I'm going to put it more towards the back side. Um, we are also going to back you guys up ever so slightly so that you can get a more fuller view of the fabric. It is so hard to like see everything. I can't see that front corner. Maybe if we rotate. Back more and then slightly rotate. Try to figure this out um it's a, a it'll i'll i'll show you a top down view um place it at the back then we're going to i have it this is the fold and then that's like the salvage edge now we're gonna take the back piece this is gonna be placed on the edge i try to place it as far up to the top corner or the bottom corner whichever way you want to place it uh, but I try to place it as close to the top edge and as close over to the fold just to kind of save fabric because if I have enough of this fabric I want to make something else out of it so I'm gonna place this up here in this corner and I'm going to put two weights on this one definitely you can do one weight you can do a book you can do whatever you have available. Then I want to take the other one, since I know where this piece goes, and place it as far to that back corner as I can without hitting the salvage edge. Place a weight on it. I'm going to grab some other things as weights. Guys, like jar. I have two candles. I also have two bottles with just random stuff in it. There's a bunch of other stuff. So now that we have those two, the next most, the most important piece after those two is going to be the sleeve. I will show you a top down view of where I'm going to put the sleeve and how I'm going to measure it out so that I can make it a long sleeve. Um, so you'll need that, but let's place this one before the sleeve. This is the back yoke number two. Um, I'm going to place it directly underneath the back piece, underneath the back 10 shirt. I'm placing it so that this bottom edge is like as close to the fold as you can. And then you'll just have to cut up the fold but that is no issue placing it as close as I can without exactly touching to the back piece because we're trying to save as much fabric as we can. We want as low fabric waste as we can get. 
and we have this whole front this whole corner is empty and then in between so I definitely think that right where the curve of the sleeve is for the back and the other flat edge of the other piece we're gonna put this pocket there's a little space um, it says to cut one but I am going to cut I'm gonna cut only one but I'm gonna place it there because it fits there um, we're going to take the if you're following the pattern the number five top collar and then you cut Two, you're gonna cut two of these the pattern does not say to cut two on the pattern but in her video she cuts two she also cuts one out of the fuse that I have to find I'm assuming it's over there but I'm gonna set that right in front of the pocket in between that space we're gonna put something on it to hold it down and the last piece left is the other part of the collar the number seven the collar stand I'm going to put this right in front of that there. So here we have it. This is the top view. The pocket's only going to be cut out once. This is kind of where I've placed everything based on my um, fabric. And then for the sleeve since i am extending it and making it a long sleeve you would want to take one of your garments that you have or your arm or whoever you're making it for kind of just measure a length i'm just gonna go with this here because i know that this is typically a decent length this isn't for myself i'm probably gonna end up selling it in the future and then all of like that extra space because i try to place things as close as i can but all this like extra space is definitely going to get used up for a future project so let's get into cutting the garment So I've cut out all the pieces. I'm going to go through the pieces that I have and tell you kind of like the things I added and the pieces that you should have. So I have one piece here folded in half. You can unfold it. This is the back. This is also the color. <laughs> you guys can see it a lot better. Uh, we have the back. We have the upper like shoulder like upper back of the back piece you need two of these cut out that was the one that we had like put on the fold and had like cut one pocket you can do more than one pocket if you're making it a jacket you could have like two like pockets 
like here's here's my flannel you could have like two pockets like down here like two pockets you can do whatever you want i'm doing a standard pocket up here and then i'm going to do like hand pockets because i'm going to make mine more of a kind of jacket over layer you're needing two of the curved collar pieces two of those and then another curved collar piece if you want the collar to be more stiff you do it out of your inner facing i should have my inner facing other piece here it is other piece this is the other piece of the collar the other collar shape i should say and then you should have two matching pieces that go with that fusible interfacing um the interfacing that i am using is sew-in interfacing there's obviously different types you could do like an iron on or something else but sew-in is just like the easiest method for me because I don't feel like getting out the iron. And then these are your two front shaped pieces. Now, obviously, if you think it's gonna be too small, you can add a few inches around the whole pattern. If you think that it is going to be too oversized on you, you can even take it in. I've taken in most of my t-shirt ones that I've made because this is a men's pattern that the lady talks about in the video. Um, so I just kind of left it the way it was because I am possibly going to be selling this down the line and like once I officially start up my business and I want it to be more unisex, gender fluid, oversized. Um, and the last piece is your sleeve. Your sleeve will not probably look like this. You may have decided to do a shorter sleeve. You can completely follow the other lady in that video verbatim and do a shorter sleeve. I, for one, wanted a longer arm. I even did it so that it like co comes over my finger. Okay, so we're gonna start sewing the first part. Um, I have taken the back piece and one of the like top of the back piece collar kind of upper back pieces and if you have a pattern you want to place them good side to good side so that it looks like this and then pin it and then you're going to do the same on the other side but what you're going to do is place the good side to since this would be technically the wrong side of the fabric, not for me, but to you, if you have a, like a pattern, like if it's directional, like one side's lighter than the other or something, you want to place the good side to the wrong side and you want them both facing where the good side or the darker part of the pattern is facing towards the garment so that when it flips up, it looks something like this and I am going to do I'm gonna attach the other piece to the back I'm gonna pin it to the back and then I'm going to sew a zigzag stitch I on my sewing machine it's number four it's not the one that looks like a lightning bolt it's the one that just looks like triangles so I'm gonna do that and come back and then show you what I have so this is what it looks like I am using brown thread typically you would want to match it but because when we do top stitching later i want it to show up as a detail as for some of my other pieces it is a bit of a detail that i like to highlight i chose brown i sewed right at the edge of my presser foot you can go a little bit larger a little bit smaller all depends you can also just do a serger for this for most of this if you wanted to so this looks like unfolded now we're going to fold it up we're going to take it fold it up like this 
and we're going to sew around the edge so around this edge up around the circle and all around and I have realized that I need to fix a few things so down a bit further that's what you kind of need to grasp you can also do each side at a time so if you do one piece and then another piece that also works too so I will come back and show you once it is sewn now that it is all sewn you're going to want to take your good side so you know if if you have like a pattern or distinct sides your good side will be where the two patterns are like the same shade if it's like a light and a dark side if not and yours is like mine pick whichever side you want so you're gonna take your front pieces and you're gonna take whatever the good side is of it if there is a good side and you're gonna line it up so it may end up being slightly bigger i did end up trimming this piece a bit um you essentially want it to look like this where that slight shorter curve is towards the center and the bigger curve for the sleeve is on the outside you're going to pin it and sew it just do a diagonal sew the one thing that I do recommend if it is a little bit bigger, which mine is, match up the outside edges rather than the inside because you can always like fold it over or cut the inside a bit more and it would be a lot easier when you're adding the collar. So you're going to sew this piece on and then you're going to do the same thing to the other piece and I will come back once that is done and okay this is what it should look like but what we're gonna want to do is flip it so the seams are on the inside and that is what it looks like so far at least what mine looks like um we're gonna skip a few things and i am going to go to the collar we will start with this piece first i guess so the curved curved piece and you're going to find whichever one of these is your lining if you're doing a lining if you are not doing a lining these next two skips these next two steps you can skip <laughs> if you are doing a lining you will want to follow the directions on your lining and do it that way i have a um sew in lining so i'm just gonna match the lining up and i'm going to sew around all four sides that is that step i'm going to also continue to the next step just because it's easier just to show them both you take the other piece and you're gonna do the same thing you're gonna take the lining put it on there sew around the edges i will come back when both pieces have the lining and then we will be on to the next okay. we have it here so i have trimmed it as well this is the one piece that you want to make sure is trimmed and now we're going to take it and turn it inside out when you turn it inside out you'll be able to see i have a hole <laughs> that i will be fixing but you'll, it's, e it's a lot easier to see if you have a hole. Take something. I'm taking the end of my seam ripper. Just to poke out these corners. You want these sharp edged corners. This would be the stage where you iron it. I'm not going to iron any of these pieces. But it is probably better to iron it down flat. I'm just not going to. Um, so you have this. And what you're going to want to do is take this piece. You want it upside down like this so that the curve goes to the bottom. And you're going to take it and put this 
it's a little hard to show. And you want that facing upwards. So you want the curve here. It's hard to explain. <laughs> so you have this like this. Flip it upside down. And on either side, you're going to want to put your other piece like this. You see how it is curving over? That is going to go to the point. It's going to curve down to these points. And you are going to sew it to one side and one side only. Then you're going to take the other piece. The curve is going to go down to the points. And you are going to sew it down on the other side. So it's going to be like this. You're just sewing on this top edge right here they're each getting sewn on their own side you're not sewing it together you are sewing them separate i will show i have sewn it and i have attempted to flip it this is where ironing would really come in handy um so this is the point where i'm gonna start straight stitching Every single point up until now, I have been doing a zigzag stitch. You can do a zigzag and a straight if you're just worried it won't hold. You can serge it, but this is the time for just a basic straight stitch. I have folded it down. We're going to take this straight stitch and so connecting these two pieces together all the way up onto this, all the way up here onto the top back down and over and even onto this bottom edge connecting it so you're going to sew connecting both of these together if you really feel the need i'm not going to do it you could also add some top stitching on this center line here if you want it to kind of lay a little bit more neater and flatter you can do that now um that's just kind of personal preference. Um, I am not going to do that because I want the look of just a plain collar and I want more of the top stitching to be the outside rather than the inside. So I'm going to sew this and then... So this is what it should look like. I will end up like trimming it slightly. You can tell here... Um, I had a bit of a mistake. It wasn't pulled as tight as I would like it, but it's gonna be on the inside and it's gonna be sewed down, so it's not much of a deal. So, the next step, we're gonna go back to this piece, this first piece we started at. And we're going to take it on the good side. And we're gonna do the armholes. So you're gonna wanna find this like big curve that you sewed both of the pieces together. This is going to be one of the more trickier steps. I always struggle with this. Pins are your best friend. So you're gonna take that curve and you're gonna take this and attach it. I'm gonna switch views so that... So, like I was saying, you're gonna take this corner here of this armhole you're gonna find the rounded edge and on your sleeve piece, good side to good side. You're gonna take this corner edge of the rounded sleeve. It's hard to see, very hard to see. So you're gonna take this piece and it's they're gonna match up. So that corner is gonna match up there. And then the other corner of this rounded edge is going to match up here. And you're gonna take this circle since like not circle, but this curve is going up and this is going under. So you're gonna stretch it and pin it so that it fits. You really need to make sure that you stretch it really well. If there is a slight issue where you stretched it so much and it's still not meeting either end, 
fold it in half and center it. Place it right on the center and then go out. It's more easier to cut off from the sides than to have to cut off one side and it'll be a little wonky. So I'm gonna sew on the one sleeve and then kind of show you what it looks like first. If you wanna keep watching before you sew, then you'll kind of know what it looks like, what I'm actually talking about, because it's hard to see when it's so dark and it's the same color on the same color. Okay, so this is what it looks like. It is sewn around the the curve the edge so when it's like flipped try to figure out where the where the top is so when it's flipped that's what it looks like it's just like the floppy unsewn sleeve yeah um so i'm gonna sew the other sleeve on the same exact way and yeah this this is basically 75% of it once you sew this other sleeve on there is maybe a few more steps if you're not adding pockets if you're going to add pockets um you can do any shape whatever you want I did like an oven knit shape when I cut it out cut you're gonna want to cut out four um I'm saying this kind of late in the process but if you want like how jackets if you want it to be more of a jacket with like pockets on the side do that if not then just stick to the chest pocket or however many of these you wanted to add if you don't even want one of these pockets do whatever. So I'm going to sew the other piece on and then I will show you what it looks like. Okay, so we have both sleeves attached. Before I put it together and sew it, I want to add my pockets first because the last time I added my pockets after and it, it wasn't it. If you are not doing like little side pockets, skip skip ahead skip ahead this whole part so i have four four of these i'm gonna sew them together first finding the pieces that match i'm gonna sew everything but this like top edge here i'm gonna sew around and then i'm gonna do it with the two other pieces and then i will come back to you and so now that we have them both sewn, we want to see where we want to put them. So this is like the tricky part, but it's a lot easier to do it in this stage. So you want to take your garment piece, take the front, um, that's the sleeve, take the bottom. I can, we can get there. You're going to want to line them up as if they're going to be sewn because this is how it's like gonna be sewn and then the sleeve so take these two line them up from the bottom outer edge and figure out where along this edge you would like to put the pocket um i personally since this pocket is pretty large i think i'm gonna go up about a bit or so and put it there so how you put this on is not that hard um so you're gonna open it it doesn't really matter um how you necessarily sew the pocket on whether you want the pretty side on the inside of the jacket the outside it doesn't matter um so i'm gonna you're gonna take Oh, excuse you. That's my cat. You're gonna... Oh, oh, no, 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 no. You're gonna take the one side and you're going to line it up. I, it's hard to show you. 
line it up with the inside of the fabric, just the one side, and pin it. And then you're going to take this other side and line it up with the other piece of fabric, pin it, and yeah, so you're going to pin both sides to either side, and then you're going to sew it. You're going to sew all the way on this side and then on this side once they're both pinned. I will show you what that looks like because that is very hard to kind of demonstrate, I guess. So I will show you in a minute. Okay, so I've done both sides. Here is your visual. So... Try to get under it. So that's what it looks like. Sewn this to the one side, the back, and then sewn this to the front side. And yeah, so the next part of it is going to be to sew all the way around. So I, it's already sewn up a little bit because of the pocket, so I'm going to take the sleeve pieces, good side to good side. If you don't have a good side, just whatever side you've been doing, you want to just make sure you can see the seams on this side. Put that together, you're going to sew the sleeve all the way down to the sleeve, all the way down to the pocket. And then you want to make sure you sew the little end on the other side of the pocket. Don't sew the pocket closed. But yeah. You're going to want to do that on both sides. And yeah, I will show you what that looks like once it's all sewn together. And there's only two or three steps left. We're almost done. Okay, so it is all, it's all sewn. It's officially a jacket. Whatever you want it to be without the collar. So uh, we're going to flip it right side out to sew the collar on. So the collar is going to go on this edge. Um, my kind of trick way of doing things is I'm going to take this, put it together, fold it in half, find the center point on this back neck. And we're going to take a pin, put a pin in it, just so that I know where I'm going to re redo this again, just to make sure I have the exact center. And I did not, in fact, have the exact center. Okay, now we have center pinned we're going to take this whichever side kind of looks a little it's good side to good side but for me um whatever side kind of looks a little crusty musty um i would say this side because of the stitching is going to go to the inside so you don't see it so we're going to fold this in half and find that center point. Take the two centers and put them together and pin them. I will show you what that looks like with that. And I'm going to pin all the way around to as far as I can go off to each side. And then you're just going to sew it. This one here if you want it a straight stitch since it's just a collar, go ahead. I'm gonna, I've been zigzagging just about everything because I'm just overly cautious and that kind of person. If you're using a serger, serge it, do whatever you want. A zigzag will definitely hold it a little bit better if you're just using a basic sewing machine. Okay, um, collar, it's on. The jacket is. Mine's a jacket, but whatever you have made yours into is basically done. Um, 
I am gonna do some top stitching. I'm gonna talk about this briefly. It's optional, but I would like it to show through. So essentially top stitching is just a line of stitching on the top. I am gonna do it, um, where do I wanna do it? I know for sure I wanna do it on this back piece here, just around this bottom line here. Um, I might go around the sleeves a bit. I definitely want to do uh, the top shoulder seam as well. That'll be a finishing touch that you will see in the end. But the next thing that we're going to do is map out the pockets. Um, when I have made these before, where have I put the pockets? I don't think I've actually made one with a pocket. Oh no, the gray one I did has a pocket. I think I want it on on the right side. So if you were to put this on, this would be the right side. Um, you are going to sew up the pocket and then sew it on. So this is your pocket. You are going to want to fold all of the edges in slightly. So fold this edge, this edge, this edge this edge and the top edge, fold them down however much you want, depends on how big your pocket is, just just a little bit, like half an inch, not even, like barely, quarter. And then you're just gonna sew all the way around and then you're going to sew it. So I will come back and show you what it looks like. All sewn around, sewn onto the jacket okay, and we're back so we sewed it together and there is four four ish kind of steps left depending on how you group them so the next step is gonna be where we're gonna put the buttons in the button holes so what you're gonna want to do i already did it once so that I can show you and then do the other side. You're gonna take this side and you're gonna fold it in. I fold it into right where the collar starts. Make sure it's even and sew it down. This is what that looks like. I kind of just got ahead of myself and already did it. My lines are not perfectly straight. Um, I am also going to do the next step after that, which is hands. I'm going to leave the sleeves for last because that'll be like the final try on for the most part. So we're gonna just do this bottom hem. So once both sides are done, this side is not done, but I will do that. We're gonna start however far in you want. I'm just gonna do a straight stitch. Around, press your foot against the edge of the fabric. If you want to fold it over because you want a bit of a cleaner look, do that. If you would like to zigzag it or do uh, some machines, my machines have like fancier stitches or if you want to use a bias tape to cover it up, do whatever you want and know how to do. I just want it to be a straight stitch and then I will slightly trim off the excess. And yeah, so I will come back and show you what both of those two things look like once they are. Okay, so I've done that. It's, it's a jacket, a shirt, whatever you're making, it's done. Um, For extra, I don't want to say detail, but just to like make sure that like these stay in place, I did... So a straight stitch just on the tops, and then of course on the bottom, I just went all the way around. Um, I also did slightly 
trim I had extra fabric on the inside any extra fabric on the inside I've been trying to trim down just to make it a bit easier so the next step is buttons um you're gonna want to pick out what buttons you want I have currently just lost the button I will find it I'm gonna do nine buttons I like the nine ish kind of button spacing on the length of this but um if you do plan on altering this I would skip to the last part of this video and do all of that first because this might be too long on you if you're just following the pattern you didn't take the pattern and move it around take it in cut it up a bit if you just use the original pattern like me it might be a bit too long for you so i would go skip ahead and do that first if you're worried about that if you're not worried about the length of it then okay so four buttons on my machine i have button hole settings that can do that if you don't have that i've done it before you're just gonna make a rectangle with your either zigzag or straight doesn't matter you'll go up then rotate over down and over and then seam rip it you'll want to maybe try to keep track and measure based on how big your buttons are oh. but if you do have the settings for it you're gonna need one of these um you put the button in the back for how big you want your button and it'll measure the button hole for you as four buttons you can do anything you want i'm going to show you the ones that i am using i am personally doing like a silver and like really ornate kind of button because i find this to be more of like i want it to be more of almost like a work jacket like something a bit more formal but you can do any sort of button you like any sort of size um i have tons of buttons lying around because i always do projects like this so i always like to do the very top and the very bottom i usually do those as tiny little buttons so i'm doing the heart um i always try to keep my center button i try to keep that bigger than all of the other buttons in case if like what if you just want to button the center and have like the rest of them open so that is my center and then in between those i have two of these two of this one and then two of like another one but it's a pearl so i am going to space things out so on the button holes and so on the buttons and then i'll show you what i have not sewn on the buttons yet i will do that it's just a long process so we're gonna skip ahead um so the final step is the fit so since this is not for me um can't really guarantee the fit but you can see how extra long the arms are so it's up to you what you want to do and you can quite literally fold the arms um i think i'm just gonna find a good place and just on me and just chop them as you can see this is the full thing it's quite oversized on me but i'm gonna leave it that way because 
later down the line somebody might buy this and it might fit their size a lot more better than mine or somebody might want it oversized so that's like the final step is deciding okay do i need to take it in are the sleeves a bit too wide for me for me personally no i don't think any of this is the issue i'm gonna chop some of the arm off and then i'm not gonna like fold it up or anything i'm just gonna do a straight stitch around like i did for this one here i just did a straight stitch on the edge this is actually the same thing except the pockets on that side and not this side but yeah so i'll come back later and show you what it looks like on with probably some type of coordinating outfit not this this does not go with this uh but yeah i was okay this is it i just paired it with some brown jeans and a white shirt because i didn't like the way it looked with the pink really up close i chopped off a bit so it's like like your knuckles lower higher knuckle lower knuckles on me if someone was longer um i also if you go to my tiktok or my fashion instagram i made a matching little type bag to go with it i think this looks really good really well it's not picking up too well on camera but if you have not make sure you like comment and subscribe i will reply to all of you that is it for the video um i will put down in the description my link tree with all of my socials you can go follow me on all of those over there i will also make sure to put down in the description the video of the lady that i first followed when i first started making this or at least the short sleeve version so i hope you all have a great day and good